what's up i'm still cold but i'm in the bed i was reading a manga like lately i decided to just like read some junji ito because i have lost like a whole lot of my just desire to consume japanese media and I don't think it's fair to say that it all sucks. I don't even think it's fair to say that like some crazy huge majority of it sucks. Cause like I said, I don't consume it anymore. I just feel that the person I am today is not, it's not hitting where I want it to hit personally. And that is why I don't really consume it as much anymore. Like, um, the last thing that I really enjoyed was Anata no Bandes, but I can't name anything after that that I really, really loved. And I have tried things. I have clicked on things that looked like they were gonna be like right up my alley, but it, it usually, it has not like panned out as I had hoped it would. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting way ahead of myself. Or maybe I'm getting behind myself. I don't know where the fuck I am. I'm just not where I want it to be. Um, Junji Ito, yes. So when I was a kid, I would call it a kid, probably more like a high school, uh, definitely before I went to college. So I'm gonna just guess high school. Around that time was when I was really into Japanese, right? And this was when I was consuming the most Japanese media. And I learned about Junji Ito around that time. I read uh, Uzumaki and it stuck <laughs> in my brain. <sighs> like really bad it was really good I, I read it in English of course um and the same for Tomie I read Tomie as well in English I did not read them in Japanese I was not that good at that point but recently I do I want to practice Japanese I don't I feel like my Japanese ability is slipping, especially because as a result of the pandemic, a lot of my like work that I can do is very much like, um, it's not something that performs very well in a country where like they have cut off all new entries for any reason for huge chunks of the pandemic. And the moment that they started to let up on that ridiculous restriction, they put it back because Omicron happens. But um, anyway, I have been reading uh, the, what the hell is this thing? It's one of the collections, right? Uh, so he, Junji Ito is a dude. Uh, so he has written like collections of stuff uh wait a minute let me double check the book it's not really a book the manga that i have been reading is uh soichi no katena noroi okay <laughs> and i got it because i was like what the heck is this cover which i hopefully will have like i don't know maybe i put it over here uh, somewhere around the skateboard, somewhere around like my messy ass bed with all stuff on it. This is where I got to interrupt myself because I forgot to explain what is happening with this kid, right? Why does he look like that? Why does he strap two things onto his head like that? Um, the answer is very cultural. It's very Japanese. So apparently, not apparently, um, like a, a more traditional way to curse somebody is something called ushi no tokimairi. It's uh so you put the the things you attach three candles traditionally, but I've seen a lot of characters do just the two candles 
There's even like one famous person, famous, terrible serial killer who um, attached two flashlights to his head. But either way, the point is when you are trying to curse somebody to kill them, you strap things in your head, not like in your head, but you strap two candles or I guess in that guy's case, flashlights onto your head as you see in the cover for this uh, book here. That's also what is happening with that doll there. Um, that doll is an effigy that you would nail to a tree in said uh, Ushino Tokimairi uh, thingy. Uh, but yeah, it's it's just like, it's a, it's showing you what kind of kid this is. This is a kid who is into the occult. He's wearing crosses. He's got like the double things on his head. He has the dolls to nail to the tree. He's got the hammer. He's got the nail sticking out of his teeth. It's like, yeah, this kid is a creepy little shit and you see he's like in the coffin and, and he's got like the it, it yeah it's if you were Japanese and you saw this image <laughs> you wouldn't be as like what the fuck is that as I initially was when I saw it but I'm not Japanese so whatever um this is my first encounter with Soichi and you know if you are a learner of japanese i would definitely recommend this if you're looking for like something that's like dark but not too hard because this is not very hard japanese at all if you just started japanese it is probably way too difficult but i think if you can have a conversation you can probably read this is it's not hard at all and it, it's nice it makes you feel like you're doing something and that's why i'm i'm reading it but i i jumped on here because bitch i can't stand this little motherfucker and i didn't translate the name it looks like you can find uh soichi no katena no roi in a museum of terror it looks like it uh maybe it's uh Kyofu Hakubutsuka is what it looks like it is called. Do not ask me. I got this digitally. So I only have that one. But let me get into Soichi here. I... I hate him. He's so annoying. Um... But I also... I... It's, I have conflicting feels. Because I am so itchy. <laughs> like, some of the stuff that he does, some of his habits, just like some facts about him are very much like, damn it, if that is not me to a T. I hate this little son of a bitch. I should find some of my like favorite panels from this volume so far and just like throw them up here. Because uh, when you say Junji Ito, people think oh it's gonna be scary like flat out it's gonna be scary it's gonna be dark it's it's for adults no like honestly i would give this to a child uh so soichi is 11 years old and he has these two cousins who come from like the big city um both of whom are high school students soichi has siblings who are also high school students he lives with like a some middle-aged and elderly people as well but I would say most of the characters in this are gonna be like high school age and Soichi is just like that annoying creepy little piece of shit that makes you want to punch him in the face and he tends to walk around with like nails in his mouth not not nails like like hammer and nail nails in his mouth um i just keep waiting for the panel where he like moves the wrong way and choke on that bitch and just die because <laughs> i don't mean like he has like a sink no like he will smile and there will be like 
a row of nails like top and bottom in his mouth i hate this little piece of shit um but he does he likes occult stuff he's like into curses um his excuse for the nails is he's anemic and it's it's iron and he just likes to suck on the iron or whatever the same for the ice um he eats a lot of ice and he it, it's because he's anemic and that's where i'm like fuck that is me to a t and he has like uh he he's he's a creepy little shit uh he will tell you that something is blood like it's weird because okay let me go back let me go back let me just talk about let me just talk about it i just want to talk about it. <sighs> he likes to pretend to be like a little vampire but the problem is that he like actually will bite people with the nails in his mouth so like everybody needs a tetanus shot in this house everybody just needs a fucking tetanus shot okay but um yeah he will have like fucking strawberry syrup and he'll be like putting it on the ice like mm, this is delicious it's blood yes i got to i got to drink your blood and it was great i'm just jumping back in here because i feel like he could make an argument that it actually was blood and he actually is drinking people's blood but he has some magical powers that he could potentially use to cover his ass and then like come to find out it's strawberry syrup and he's just being a little ass hat but also he's like dangerous like he's into the occult he will do like he will make dolls that can suck up your soul or or I don't remember the phrasing. I didn't read that story recently. I I just picked up at uh, Soichi's birthday is the chapter that I'm on. And it's like about halfway through the book. But um, yeah. Just like he does nefarious stuff. That's just like, okay, somebody needs to come. Just like backhand this little piece of shit. <laughs> and sometimes he'll do stuff that's like that is a child and also me uh but right now like i am reading uh like i said i'm reading soichi's birthday and this is where you're like okay see you little shit this is why nobody fucking likes you but then it's like it's justified so let me go back let me go back so they are singing happy birthday to his cousin michina she is visiting for like the golden week uh like vacation you know golden week you you're gonna have to google it if you don't already know what that is it's like a japanese thing it's it's several days of holidays back to back and it means that a lot of jobs get like a weekish off of work golden week that's what it is okay um but it's golden week they're singing happy birthday to the cousin who is visiting from the city and they're like ah ha ha having so much fun and there's one person who isn't there soichi he like drops down and he's like yo the candles ain't lit this cake is weird and of course like this is after he has like spat a nail into the cake because he's a disgusting little shit like who does that but when i tell you what's happening you're gonna get it all right, so he he pops down. He like spits a little a little nail into the cake. Everybody's like, "Ew, dude, that's gross. Why are you like this?" And he's like, "Well, I mean, y'all the ones who then uh, blew the candles out. Like, what's happening?" And then somebody at the table is like, "Oh shit, it's his birthday too, ain't it?" <laughs> and even his, I think it's his mom. Even his fucking mom is sitting there like. Ooh, damn <laughs> and it's like well uh, the brother's like well it's because he says i was born june 6th uh at six o'clock six minutes and six seconds whatever the fuck a bunch of sixes in a row was my birthday like he says that so often he acts like that is the truth so his brother's like well shit you know i i just started 
fucking acting like that was true, but it's not. You and our cousin have the same birthday. And the cousin is about 12, I think. Yeah, yeah, uh, he says he was born June 6th at 6 a.m. Wait, at 6.06 a.m. And then like six seconds on that, okay? But yeah, they're like, dude, just, that's our bad. Come down, you can eat the cake with us. Like, there's already a part with your nasty ass nail in it where you done spat your spit into the cake. <laughs> Come on and eat this. And I understand. I understand why he feels the way that he feels. Like, I, I would feel some type of way too if it was my birthday and y'all were just like, happy birthday to everybody but you. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I, I would feel a way too. I get it, I get it. So because he feels a way, he's like knocking on the ceiling and like the dust is falling onto the cake and just like little stuff like that where you're like, okay, I can see where the way everybody treats you informs the way that you treat them which informs the way that they treat you because he is very different from everybody else in his family like his family's just sitting around the table like oh why is he so different like he he's not like anybody in the family like nobody in the family has a personality like that and you just want to be like bitch you inherit facial features not personalities <laughs> look at me jumping in to correct myself yet again Soichi has a grandmother who is very much like him. She is creepy and off-putting, and she seems to maybe not follow a lot of, like, social cues is maybe the nicest way I can put it. And it is very off-putting for people who, like, talk to her, but... Um, yeah, he, he does have a grandmother who is very much like him in actuality. Just, we don't see her because she may or may not be dead. The, the part that I'm reading is not very clear on whether or not she's dead. Also, he has a twin, sort of, kind of. Um, it's, you would have to read it. That's, one of the weirdnesses of his grandmother. Nobody else has ever seen the twin, only the grandmother and Soichi himself. But yeah, like his, his family is weird about him, admittedly, but it, it's like a, it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy on both sides of the equation like and they talk to him all like crazy but he talked to them all crazy it's like I don't know what this is this is basically just like a vlog where I just ramble about what I'm reading and that's what I'm reading I'm reading Soichi or there's too many Soichi stories and books for me to just say that so I will say it again I'm reading Volume 6 of the Museum of Terror. Soichi no katte na no doi. Okay, that's what I'm reading. I like it. There is comedy. There's like... <laughs> there's one story where Soichi's ass cheeks get like just exposed at the schoolyard. <laughs> in front of the girl that he likes. And it's like, oh, you little shit, you deserve that. But also, you're kind of like me, and I fucking hate you. Because when I see that he's kind of like me, like, I saw his room decorations, and I was like, that's a nice room. <laughs> uh, like, it, it was a creepy room, but it was nice. It was lovely. I just wish that you didn't, st I wish you weren't a little shit. Because, like, uh, his cousin rightfully slapped the shit out of his ass in the first, story and he had like his nails coming out of his cheeks and stuff and it's like I mean don't be a little shit I don't know what to tell you my dude anyway I like Soichi I feel like it is if you have a dark creepy child who likes dark creepy things 
it might be like a fun read in uh yeah uh, I think it's a fun read funny things happen uh but anyway anyway I've been talking way too damn long I am going to go continue reading about Soichi's birthday and I will be back later I don't know how to end this <laughs> um bye